So we, I mean, everyone knows this by now. So it's more to give you a quick overview, especially Brian and Matei, and I don't know Vivian. And also like the by the end, first, if there's some big flow or something that is this is possible, please let us know. And then the the next thing is try to plan next steps, uh, things that work are worth sorry to bigger, and think about the, like production at the end and in that. And I will, I mean I had a few questions to approach with you uh, and discuss, but like if you have any others, please let us know. Um, I, I think that Mike already motivated why we are starting with this kind of consensus. We want to try and prioritize, uh, so not rely on a single consensus target, but be able to have a catalog and according to the exact use case to be able to to choose so that applications can choose the consensus target on that is the the best and be able to leverage the security of the whole system instead of like just half an isolated system. So in the end, what we are building is a framework. Uh, we are building the pipes in order to uh, allow fast consensus targets in subnets and leverage what already exists in what we call the root network. That our target is the Python mainnet. But if this is general enough, other blockchains can implement this. It would be great because that way we all speak the same language and we could start like parallel. I mean, checkpoint in parallel and communicating in parallel. So. Um, and briefly and high level, this is uh, how hierarchical consensus look like. The idea is that um, it's a framework for on demand horizontal scaling, which means that when users or applications want to scale from a root network, they should be able to, or we should enable a way of, for them to spawn a new subnet with its own consensus algorithm, its, its own state. So that transactions are validated in parallel with the ones in the in the root network. So in bit, and, and then we can have like what we call the parallel chains, like uh, checkpoint chains, like what Sarah is doing, which is having Bitcoin there, so that the root network also has as a different security with with something else. But in the end, everything will be ordered with respect to everything. Yes, that's in everything that that depends on the state of another. So so if I'm not necessary. Not necessarily. If I'm just running or sending transactions that affect the state in my subnet, there's no word. I mean, I don't care about what's happening somewhere. So it will be kind of a causal consistency system. Yes. Kind of. Well, there is no consistency among subnets unless you move something. Yes. No this is totally part of it. Yeah, but then when each of them checkpoint to something that is ordered, you will just establish a total order on these subgroups of transactions. Only for the state. So you interleave the histories. Like, let's okay. think that you are running a consensus here in one subnet and in the other subnet. They are running in parallel. The states are completely different. But then you interleave pieces of the state when they interact with each other. Because like you go to the top yes. of the hierarchy, you order on some like plane where you both. But just the pieces of the state, not yes. the whole. Yes. The yes. 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 There is no need and no practicality in aligning the subnets to kind of make it Yes. 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 No, it makes sense. Yes. yes, so so only we to reach state and now so we have a now we have the pipes in order to send cross messages. We need to figure out how to perform atomic execution that depend on state because like I can talk to the other side and be able to order correctly. Now we need to figure out how we can affect the state in two subnets with the same message. So to do atomic execution. That's Actually, it. but with the checkpoints you have total order, but it's not really total order because you you're you're not touching the same state in some at the same time. Yes, but if you want to really decide which is first, you can. You can. You can. Yes. yes. So yes. which is the definition of total order? Yeah, but it's a bit faking. It doesn't apply on any state, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> 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 if you want to think that we do independently, yes, you could. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You're under events. Yes. Yeah. So events that are in the weekly order. Yeah. But apart from that, we don't care about that. And the idea is like that we have a root chain, and any user would be able to like uh, horizontally start spawning new subnets below. And also from child subnets, you should be able to still keep your going deeper and our list. And um, one of the of the key requirements, security requirements that we force in subnets is this firewall requirement that we see in some side chain uh, papers. And in the end, like the firewall requirement is that we limit the impact that an attack in the subnet can have over the target chain. And this limit right now is um, on the total supply that has been injected in the subnet, which means that 
we don't enforce uh, any guarantee of security in the subnet. We allow like some users that are malicious or, or that want to force their own consensus to be able to run attacks in the subnet. But the attack that these subnets can have over the upper layers of the hierarchy is limited by the circulating supply. This is the case for now that we only have font exchanges, like the Python exchanges. One we have more attention, we may have to release this property. But right now, like there's no way of because and I, I will show you in a moment, but the the parent chain keeps track of all of the fonts that have gone inside and outside the subnet because it's a gateway to checkpoints and like uh data transactions to the to inject or take funds out, which means that uh once you realize that something sketchy is happening and that's more circulating supply than the one that you go out uh is it's sending messages out, you just like cut that subnet because it's a bit uh, so that's the, the firewall requirement. And the way in which we we communicate between all of these uh, uh, subnets is with what we call trustnet messages. And again, according to the trustnet message goes down or up, we have like two types of messages, the top down and the bottom up. The bottom up, they are propagated through checkpoints because like uh, parents are not enforced to sync with all of these cells, but childs have to listen to the uh, parent subnet because like it needs to know what is happening over there and this depends on the on specific actors and that's why the like, top down messages are at this point maybe it's important to say that we assume that you know, we still assume that all miners on a parent summit are no they don't miners on the child summit are also miners yes but not necessarily in the sense that uh, if i want to spawn from so i need to sync with the parent sorry which means that if i want to spawn from the root chain it means that i need to be a miner or a validator in the root chain but if I want to start, actually, I need to go. Yeah, yeah. it's still the case because if I want to spawn from a child, I still need to have to be able to deploy an anchor to child. Yes, I, th I think it's simplified the assumption that so you're running an on the cloud point mainnet. As you go down, this means that you're running or you trust the node that you have some click of nodes that you trust that run nodes at each level. I mean, what, what is it? What does it mean to be a, a like a miner or a validator in terms of an arbitrary consensus graph? So you, I mean, you don't need to be in the part as long as you don't want to scale from the part because I can see with that. So if we have like this. Um, I could see the so oh. if, if if I want to scale horizontally the root, I need to necessarily be syncing with the root, which means that, that I need to be a full node and have the full state because I need to listen to that. If not, I mean I could be a light client, but I won't I wouldn't trust like there's a, some kind of trust barrier there. But if I want to horizontally scale from the child, I don't need to be in the part. Yes. How, how, the, how do you listen to the to the child for top down? So when there is a checkpoint, because you need to listen to something. Yes, there. yes. I mean, it depends. I mean, it could be a light client the others because the only thing that you need to listen is as long as you trust the. If you don't trust the parent, you need to be yes. the, in the chain. If you trust the parent, you don't need to be in the. What is this is what I meant. There is a trust. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Either you do it yourself or a node who you trust or yes. But like childs have always, I mean, all childs need to sync with the parent. That's yeah, that's for sure. And then the if you want to scale the root, you need to be a miner in the root. This is the other requirement. So that we don't need the power and so that you sync with the blockchain. You need to be a miner or a validator? A validator. Except we scale the expected consensus from Padler, and we so if we have a subnet that will have miners, like actual miners, and we want to keep that consensus, you need to be a miner in both because that way you don't need to be But because initially, you, you remember, like we, we started thinking that we were only going to use Python expected consensus for all of the subnets, so we didn't want to dilute the, the power in the blockchain. Okay. This has like changed a bit because now we support any kind of process, which means that if you are in the storage market, 
you need to to be a miner in the in the blockchain. But if we are running any other BFT uh, and Charles are just other BFTs, it doesn't matter if you're mining or not, as long as you trust the job. You need some trust because you're yes. reading information. At some point, you need to read. Yes, yes, yes. I mean that's why you see with the plant for sure. And but yeah. in the root, uh, you can be a light player. I mean, in theory, you don't have to, for example, if the BFT is there, you don't need to trust it, but you need, you need to read from a light form plus one. Plus no, one. but like, yes, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we, for parts for sure, and for the root also, but anyway, let's, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, just, 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 SMR system where the output of it is just a sequence of some transactions that are either either agree or not. It's uh, it's a complete it's independent stack. So it's like if you were running a section. So actually, if you look like low level, is this? Uh, if you have this subnet with some state tree, so in the end, the VM has to be the same implementation because you have compliance just the same. But like it's its own IPA, its own state tree, its own contestor, its own mess. So it's like independent and sure. beyond. But what, what do I have to care about when, I, when I'm a child? Uh, you say I have to listen to the parent. So yes. what I listen to is basically the output of the parent is the sequence of orders. Per, mm, order not even like events. He doesn't want to listen. Just events on a set of. So okay. the, the logic of all this framework is implemented in, in, two, in, in an actor and an interface. So you have like what we call the subnet coordinator actor, which is the one that enforces all of this logic. Of, uh, of the framework. And then whenever you want to deploy a new subnet, you deploy an actor uh, that implements as what we call the subnet interface that has all of, I mean, a set of functions where you define the logic that you're going to enforce on that subnet, which means like this is a consensus algorithm, this is the requirements to join, because maybe as Marco mentioned, we want a consensus algorithm in a data center, so you're going to force that the delay is just that, that whatever. So you have these actors. And all of the operations, uh, so then you, you spawn these, these uh, subnets that has its own subnet coordinator actor, which is the gateway to interact with the rest of the of the system. And here, like at this point, the only thing that you have is a sidechain, and then another two two different networks. Mm -hmm. And in order to start interacting with the system, you need to reduce. So right now we put some we have to figure out the like, behind it and the incentives yet, but you put some collateral, and from there on you can start interacting with the rest of the network. But you only listen to events in the in the parent to mm -hmm. this in these two actors. Okay. So you trust the ordering and like uh, the stack in the in the parent, and you only listen to events in that one. And we'll see now that um, when you want to interact with all of the hierarchy, many of the operations are not sent through your subnet, but with the parent. So that's why, like, because you send them directly to the subnet coordinator driver or to your subnet actor. Which means that you need to have like these two legs in both networks in order to operate. Okay. I mean, hopefully it will make more sense in, in a moment. But yeah. um, the question is about that. Uh, yeah, we're really just to put things into perspective. So we have right now we're listening to Filecoin. We have the only one story party. Yes. This year if we unlock VM potentially, the VM Matic can spin up our own story yes. market. We can define the rules in the VM locked in a smart contract, define our, our own crypto and stuff. So in this sense, we, we would be like our own group, only listening to what is happening upstairs, or we would need to run the entire cy cycle just looking at the checkpointing. Is like what is the preferred way? So the idea is like it should be up to just imagine the world if like it's scaling in terms of having only one, and at the end of the year we have like a loaning service that is run on a separate storage market. This, this is a real life use case. Right. You can have it in, in the five minute, but if you want to scale it in the number of messages process, or you yes, when I want to define my own world, you go to another subnet, okay. you have the subnet, and you can even have the sector of bookkeeping still in the or the tower actually in the root and have this subnet from the storage market. Like when you have a new deal, yeah. the, the storage, I don't know how you're going to run the tower actor or if it's going to change, but you could have the power actor still in the main net. And be just check for not check for, but like having bottom up messages to update okay. the sector of keeping or something so that mm -hmm. this can operate independently, have its own uh throughput and so on, but still keep the consistency. Mm -hmm. So that's the we kind of have a if you see a use case, 
you know, as, 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 as understanding, where do you see a use case from, from your real life experience? Let's yes. write yes. it down. Let's try to, you know, the exercise that. Yes, yes. 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 at one point we had thought like to test it, we can have uh, one subnet for miners, one subnet for payment channels, mm -hmm. so that we, I don't know, like test how a miner operates in another sub. But then it's really hard because the, the, the protocol is not so decoupled. Yes. You can have the power actor and the minor actor somewhere else, but then what do you do with deals? And so, but that's the kind of thing that we want to explore. Like, if, we, yes. if, if I have a, a, a storage market that I want to connect myself with logging or whatever, if I want high throughput, if I am able to just spawn my own subnet and still like be consistent with what is happening in the, in the main. Yeah. Yes. They, uh, Okay, I'm going to close with this. So right now we know there is a huge demand for loading because we have onboarding new storage. Onboarding new storage, you need load. Yes, we get filled. Right now somebody kicked that off. It got five million filled from like the initial traction. So imagine if we did it, we can do like 20 million, whatever. And then we need to manage that in our own way. And this will kind of lock us the potential to do so. But then what we need to figure out is the mess messaging back to the public. Like, but, but that's the thing because like if the onboarding depends on previous onboarding on public, so if the, the actual sector of the keeping is still in the main yes, yes. Then it, I mean it doesn't matter like the main thing is gonna happen in the in the yes. top chain, which wouldn't at least when we were talking with Nicola about this, how we can recover all of this stuff, yes. it shouldn't mess up with the security supply. Yeah it shouldn't but it's something we should discuss. Yeah. Okay. So what these guys are doing is their own level two which is centralized. So this yes. is their yes. Like, yes. need to transfer funds there, I guess, and that thing is doing the yes, everything is yeah. there, but here yeah. we can like we FPM we can do it the best way. Yeah. The, the proper way to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the top in the purple, which is something that yes. <laughs> right now is nice. And I promise this is the very last one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're talking about like, uh, operations, transactions, messages, and stuff like that. Is it all the same? Yes, sorry. Okay. Because I mean, we, we I don't call them messages because we use the. To me, messages is a bit confusing. I have to yeah, yeah, no, I'm sorry. Like, yeah, that's <laughs> I mean, messages equals transactions. Like, yeah. it, it does it equal events? Sorry? Is it events as well? Events are different. Events is state changes. So okay. you send a message which changes the state in an actor because it's a smart contract with this actor. And events is like a state change in the state. Which it, it which always corresponds to a message. No, the message triggers a state change. Okay. Is the, the actor so model. Exactly. Actor model right? I'm, I'm just trying to say to like yeah. level with the yes. level of abstraction we are calling yeah. it. Right? And then like I should introduce the state tree, which is like all of our so we have the chain and we have the state tree. And the state tree is the, 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 the persistence of all of yeah. the so we you don't need the chain in order to have like a place state. And yeah. a message is triggered changes in the state tree, but you also keep the message that you the chain of ordering. But like, <laughs> tree is very well accepted terminology. We should rename it something else to suit people. The state tree, I mean, the state tree is the one that <laughs> I know is the less. I know. know. It's, it's, it's atypical in, in our, we should call it La Coco. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so events, changes in La Coco. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, so yeah, and like, if we want to deploy a new segment from a child, the same, like we deploy a subnet attacker that defines the, the different policies and we should be able to, to scale it. And yes, uh, this is, so maybe you have realized this, but uh, we use deterministic naming for subnets at this point, because that way you can locate, first they are, they can be deterministically discovered. And also you can, um, and you see why this is interesting. And also, there was another thing that I forgot. And I don't remember, but the thing is that uh, the way in which we name that is that the mainnet for the root chain is called root, and from there, uh, we, we infer the ID from the actor, the ID of the actor, because this is persistent, so the ID of the actor, and you read, so the ID of the actor that implements the subnet interface for that subnet, so the one that governs the subnet in the part. And the reason for this is that whenever we want to communicate with another, so in the transport layer, we have we share the LTP, the LTP layer, but each subnet has its own gossip subtopics. So that if I want to, so like the messages for uh, uh, are, we don't have to discern between the different messages because they run in different broadcast uh, channels. Mm -hmm. 
And if we want to communicate with one of these uh, subnets, we can discover them right away because it's just knowing their, their location in the hierarchy and sending a message to them. And that's it. And this is, comes really handy when we need to access messages that have been started and used in moment. Like if someone sends me a checkpoint, they don't send me a checkpoint with all the messages that need to be applied cross messages, but they send me the CID. The CID doesn't live in my subnet, so I have to we have a content resolution uh, protocol in order to be able to fetch those messages from the right subnet. So we need this way of potentially being able to communicate with other subnets that are potentially sending us messages. But you will use CID to drill down the searching point. Sir, you will use CID like a... we have what you're gonna hate that is the F4 address that adds uh, sub subnet <laughs> information. So I uh, know, but that, that's only for messages, and the CID is just a plain CID. Okay. So you ask for the plain CID, but uh, you know what who to ask, what does it yes. to ask because you have like this F4 address. Okay. okay. But the F4 address is any Python address with context about the subject. Yes. And, and yeah, like uh, the the way in which we interact between different checkpoints, as I said, is either like sync down or checkpoints up. And that's it. Mm -hmm. I don't think this is needed for this. Like this is the subnet coordinator actor. These are the, the, the function that you have, register subnet, which is the one that you use to collateral and register subnet, so that you can start interacting with the rest of the hierarchy. Commit check, child checkpoint, which is to commit because where you commit the checkpoints is in the parent. So this is the way in which we commit new checkpoints from a child. Send cross messages because we don't. So the, this subject coordinator actually is our gateway to the hierarchy mm -hmm. framework. So sending a cross message means sending a, a message to be sender, and this actually does all of the, all of the tailoring of the, of the message somewhere else. This apply cross messages is called by the VM in order to apply cross messages because then there may be like some additional logic required. Actually, there's some additional logic required for uh, last mile ordering. And this is done by, by this actor because has, it, it has tracked like a circular display and, and so on. So the VM also runs a, a pre like check with, from the SCA. So this is called by the system. And then we can add, remove, and collateral with an TLS subnet. And this is something that we are, that's, that is in the works. I mean, that it would be great to store state in a sector mm -hmm. so that when we hit a subnet or someone that wants to create a snapshot can take the state because potentially they, I mean, the state tree because potentially then in some subnets it may not be that large and it would fit a sector for sure. Mm -hmm. And it would be great if one would have a VM and we have like this native capability of storing mm -hmm. state. We'll figure out how we can retrieve it afterwards, but like the idea is to once a subnet is killed to have a way of having the state tree there so that we can act, the checkpoints will still, still be uh, on top of the hierarchy so that we have ways of verifying and like accessing state mm -hmm. that has been shared. But you are also sharing this on Zoom, right? Yeah, and the subnet actor, this, I mean, we have a reference implementation of the subnet actor, but the idea is that this is used to define. So as long as you implement the interface with this constructor where you set the, the genesis, the server, the checkpoint period, so how, how often you want to checkpoint to the function and so on. Um, but like the join, the submit checkpoint, the kill, leave, and all of these functions are used to so that any application can choose their own policy. And with this submit checkpoint here, so, so how it works, the checkpointing is that, I mean, for instance, uh, Sarah is implementing with PKG, but now in our reference documentation, we just use a majority, so a majority of the miners, two thirds of the miners have to sign the checkpoint in order to be propagated to the SCA. But the idea is that anyone should be able to build their own because the checkpoint what they do is propagate proof of state. So you take the state tree, you do whatever proof you want to, to snatch it on top so that anyone can verify they have access to the state or if you use say a computation, maybe you don't even need access to the state. But um, so the sound detector contains this like what's the policy for yes, this? for for signing. Yes. And so in that way, like we pre-agreed upon the proof that we're going to use and the symmetry uh, policy, and then that keeps running. And right now, the reference implementation uses two thirds, but uh, we could use PKJ, we could use whatever submit actor checks this before propagating it and committing it in the, into the RFC. So that way, we give full flexibility for the proofs that you want to use. However. In here, you could do some zero knowledge. Yes, and this is lurk, lurk. the part where we went for lurk. 
because maybe I, I don't know, like we, we need to check, but maybe we don't even because right now our proof is super naive, which is the tip set for the epoch in which you're checking. If you have access to the stage, you can figure out if it's correct or not, but maybe we can do something where you don't even need access to the stage. Just by inspecting the proof, you can verify. Of course, if you want to do stuff with the state, you would have to access the previous state, but just for verification, we want to make it not needed to access the state. That's mm -hmm. possible. But we'll see. And yeah, so this is again work in progress. So if you see something, speak up. And also, like, uh, there are some parts of the system that we want to explore deeper. So we have the pipes, and hopefully, we'll be able to come up with a catalog so that users can, for instance, like the consensus right now, it would be great if we can have the uh, Mateis, the Terrace, and so on. If we have a catalog to offer any subnet, this idea that users should be. And, and the aspiration is even that in FDM, you should be able to implement the consensus so that you can flow. Your own consensus. So that's like the aspiration, but right now we have reference documentation of where we of all this. I don't think it's like uh, really needed from us. Yeah, 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 sure. But it would be how do you put a consensus in FDM? Uh, that's a great question. Because so right now, <laughs> if you have um, an interface to the messaging, near PFD is just a framework. An ordinary framework that needs to be running every node. Yeah, but it's in every node. Yes, it's in every node. Right? So if you have access to messaging layer and its state, you could do all the checks. So you just need an interface to interact with the state tree and with the messaging layer. And then you implement the logic as part of the of the VM. Does the terror been done on any of the I should check. Yeah. I don't know. I don't think it is. But once we have WASM, it would be great because yeah. implementation any like you could take a new BFT from Python and take it to not Solana but Polkadot and be able to run. <laughs> just not Solana. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say Solana, but Solana is just need WASM. So. But I don't know, I mean, this, this is a great idea. Yeah. From uh, I was thinking about this the other day, but maybe it makes no sense. I cannot wear a record grid, so let's assume you need to. Well, let's, let's forget it. Let's discuss it. This, this, this is like, uh, but it, like, Jara, for you, is, we have a catalog. Hopefully, we will give a catalog for anyone to be able to have mm -hmm. to provide a consensus that better suits their needs. Mm -hmm. And right now, like, this catalog is already there, but with like nine super mm -hmm. dumb consensus, which is a proof of work and, and a non consensus thing. <laughs> 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 And we will be, um, I mean, spawning a subnet is just sending uh, to show you like high level where the messages that flow through the hierarchy. You send either uh, the constructor or the join if you want to join an already existing subnet in the subnet actor of the parent. When you are over the threshold for collateral, you register in the hierarchy. And like the subnet actor is not so the only one that can send messages to the related to the, or, I mean, like register, joining, adding collateral, and so on, is not users, the one that is having the SCA, the subnet actor. Mm -hmm. And it has to be the subnet actor with the right uh, ID. If not, like the message is not accepted. Mm -hmm. And this is the way which we forward the information to a collateral, the collateral here, or the sign off from the subnet actor. Is there, when you join, you join locally at the, at the node, right? So assume that there is a minimum number of a subnet may define yes. a minimum number of nodes. So if that's not satisfied, you're drawing and you're waiting for others. Yes, or? yes. What you do now, you join and you can keep mining in the in the sidechain if that's enabled or not. Yeah. But you won't be able to register in the parent. So it means that if in the subnet actor we say we need five miners, it will be receiving collateral and you won't release that collateral to the SCA and register to the parent until the requirements are. Will I be locked if nobody else joins and I keep mine there? Yeah, but you're locked in a section. You just you would be Yeah, I'm just thinking of a way how to present that to somebody who's actually like, I join, I want to be there, but I need to wait for others. To... So I mean if you have to wait for others, I mean you can always leave, like and release your platform. So, so, so depending on how you look at it, if the first person can implement the universe with one node, and then when people yes. join mm -hmm. the 
kind of you know changes the way that would be well as possible. Yeah. But, yeah, but we can start. Yeah. We need some trust in yes, this. Yeah. Yes, and that's why we, we so that is why this is user defined. We have an example even in the implementation where you wait for three nodes. So you cannot. This is this is going to be good. Yes, yes. Yeah. So we're going to, right now the submitter is deployed and you can reach just one, with one node because it's proof of work and delegated. We don't care. But the idea is to have a reference also that when you, so in the reference implementation, that when you choose a BFT, you have to wait for three nodes in order to start, mm -hmm. like for the assignment to start very. But, but that's it. Three nodes. In a, what does it mean, three nodes? Uh, so three different miners that have two collateral. That's the okay. way we identify max. So miners need to have collateral and they are added to a list. And there's a minimum amount of collateral in order for you to be counted. That's up to you, you should find. So, so the okay. two register, there's a minimum collateral, but that's why this is user defined. So that according to your process, well, it's pretty sure. Actually, the paper from the where you borrow this, so the proof of exciting that I think they're just explaining the uh, idols here at one of the so basically, we are taking some of the things from there, and it's like uh, with this firewall, it's about imagine how LLC is formed. Like you have some, you know, founding state. So basically, you found the company, you have like the initial shares, and this is what your liability is. And people can see that and can, this, can make an informed decision whether they want to join them. Yeah. They kind of understand what it is for like open. I also remember this one somewhere, somewhere back in better. In which case, the number, of, the physical number of nodes doesn't really matter. It doesn't no, no, matter. Right. We just like, I mean, you could do collateral as a user, but we only track miners because they have collateral in the system. Yeah, but you said at least three nodes. Well, you could have one, you three times as much collateral. No, you, three different addresses. Yeah, that, that's uh, what I mean, like uh, one, uh, three. Ah, four. I don't know. I said three is a magic number. Yeah. Like, <laughs> whatever your consensus is, that's why it's just fine. But the people that have been, I can say, it's true for my knowledge. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Yeah, the that's why you're not the US. Yes. But that's why we don't. It's the opposite situation. It's up to you. You just put your five point five for nothing. Yeah. <laughs> And we even like in the implementation, we even have a dump. So that's you know to show you we have a dump between this subnet and so the circulating supply and the collateral that that subnet has, and that would be like the the LS, LSC like I don't know. It can give you a bit of a sense of what is the size or what is the insurance that the collateral has in. I mean the collateral has in case of attack as well. So yeah, like the supply and bring it. Bring this certainty. If there's a million lot there, it's kind yeah, of yeah, it's, it's that, that's kind of a layer two mm -hmm. approach where you see how much is not, but there's also collateral. It's not that we ensure an attack. We don't know how we're going to do it. Yet. Is, <laughs> is there some definition of misbehavior or attack or something? In which case, collateral is uh... no. We have ideas, but there's no. Formal so you put collateral, but we don't know yet. We like, know that we're going to use it. We don't know that. <laughs> So we have the crypto icon lab, so we, we can figure this out around. Mm -hmm. We have this crypto icon lab that we want to interface with. But we have a meeting this what tomorrow? Tomorrow at five. We should refine the question. So we have the yeah. initial we question. We can have a look at that. And then we should have at least their blessing if we propose something for them, like understanding what we want to do and helping them here. Can you do you can you reuse your collateral like vertically or do you know you need to this slug collateral? Yes, this is slug. So you, when you, you first you, let's think of adding collateral in this subnet in order to to respond this one. Sorry, I just <laughs> okay. So I'm trying to stop the notifications every three seconds. Yes, subnet in chat. You have the root, you yes. have a child, and then you want to spawn a new yes. one, so you need to put collateral. This means that if you already put collateral here, that's frozen. Okay, so, so you, you need to create new collateral injected here and then, and then you yes. just yeah. So there's no merit state merging yeah. or, or something like that. Um, yes, just one second. I promise. Oh, I, I don't promise that the warnings are gonna go away. I hope so, but okay, so Really quick uh, checkpoints. They're used for two reasons. First, uh, committing proofs like 
having a way of limiting the, the outer layers of the party, the stripping of the perturbation of the party, and propagating the process of this. So we, here you have like the basic data structure of, uh, of a checkpoint. Like right now, you see that really nice. The proof is just the epoch uh, of this checkpoint and the opposite of that. <laughs> and the, the, the actual tip set, so that you can verify the message. I've tried this quite. They try again, they don't give up. It's just like if I said, keep trying to connect. Yes. Yeah. So, you know what is trying to hide? Yeah. Sorry, okay. carry on. But I'm also seeing the story. Yeah. Some device that I have to be Sorry? Is a device that's taking the picture? Yeah. 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 I'm going to try to come back now. So we can run your from any cast any shit. Yeah, so the proof is this. Uh, here you're gonna kill the TV. <laughs> Just keep going. Here we go. <laughs> then and then we have like information. I mean, we also provide information about crash messages and child checkpoints that have been committed. And if you look to these cross message meta, we don't propagate up the actual cross messages because they could be huge, but we propagate in what we call the met metadata. If you've seen in the lots of base code, there's this, this message meta. This is the message meta that cross messages, mm -hmm. where we aggregate all the CIDs of the messages so that we have a way of, of, of fetching them if we need it. And uh, that's it. Yeah, like again, submits are free to choose their validation logic. So, uh, how does the checkpointing uh, works when you define a subnet the checkpointing period. So I want 100 epochs, and every 100 epochs you want to meet a checkpoint. But we open it to different windows. Like first is the checkpointing window, which is the one in which the checkpoint is being populated. So all of the cross messages that are that need to be propagated and all of the child checkpoints that are committed are populated inside a, a checkpoint template. And then when we reach the the epoch for the next checkpoint, what we open is the checkpointing period for the next one. So we start aggregating ch child, child checkpoints and cross messages and the signing uh, window for the previous checkpoint, which means that here is where miners will get the, the template um, and add the proof because each miner is supposed to add a proof in the run implementation, sign it and commit it so that the submit actor checks the two thirds and what the two thirds uh, are checked. The subnet, sorry, the checkpoint is committed in the parent. And like that's. Uh, what is physically, who, who sends a transaction to the parent? No, each miner. I mean, in our two thirds, that each miner needs to sign a message to the parent. Okay, but I can 100 nodes in the parent, I can turn in the. Yeah, but only the ones in the side. The last one or whatever, to send up. Only the ones in the side. Yeah, you need to send to a plus one after. So yes. Player. Yes. So the total message. Right now they are. That's why we need to figure out other devices. You won't do it right now. You will do all this. They're going to send four timeouts and four more, and eventually it can lead to this deterministic bound. But hopefully we are going to actually. Going to and so actually. everyone sends, but everyone keeps a coin. And yeah, I will do it like yeah, okay. I'm yes. honest. I keep a coin yeah. with one time. And, and, and now I'm time on. And even more, like even if yeah. all of them for malicious nodes, we can do they it. Just no, no, wait, wait, they can't because like even if you're sending messages, the actor checks if already has been fulfilled the requirement, and it doesn't accept new messages. Yeah. So it means that's it. The, I mean, if we reach the two thirds and you're still like coming the, the messages, it, they won't get in. They like, won't get in, but there will be some work. I mean, no, 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 no because you, you I mean, uh, we would have to check, but like right now, as, as, so as worst case, you have the malicious one. Yeah, yeah, but like it wouldn't even be proposed as message because before proposing messages in a block, how in platform right now, you need to execute them successfully locally, which means that I would try to, to of course, I, I could. Push one, but no one would accept that block, so it wouldn't be even executed or the message included in the block. So, because of how it's architected in Platinum, this is not the case. You only would have like two thirds, which is already two, uh, like a lot, but once you reach the two thirds, you wouldn't keep accepting new ones. But we can see this low level detail because with the third, we mentioned this like you flip a coin, you use DRAN, and you choose like 
Uh, if, if you keep a local coin, that helps in the on stage to reduce the load, but markers of value exists. If you use a natural random beacon or a BRF, then you have actually to prove that. Yes, we could even include the ticket from the event. Yes, and then you actually protect the knowledge too. And if you add it to the actor, you will. The cost is that now you have to verify the ticket apps. No, but if it's the event, also there might not be enough. And then if the malicious, if there are malicious on the top, right? Then it's okay. You will then want to repeat. Yeah. Think of a sequence around there. Yeah, yeah. I see. Then you can stretch for a long time. And then there's another thing we have like the sign in window is. The checkpoint it's equal to the checkpoint period, which means that here you have 100 efforts. Mm -hmm. yeah. this, this example, so it, it would, I mean, that's why this is usually defined because according to your use case, you can choose like maybe two thirds is okay, 100 efforts, and it's up to you how you like, yeah, right in the, in the checkpoint period. The best way to see it is like uh, the times act as like uh, as clients on the wire. Yeah. Yeah, 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 there's nothing different. Like if I'm a client and I need to set, uh, yes, and yeah. I don't want it to be censored, I have to do something. That's how I always saw it. Yeah, no, no, yeah. 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 like because you already see it. Yeah, yeah, I'm like that with clients. I have the client code, no, that, that, yeah. that's how I saw yeah. it. Was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 and. Uh, yeah, so if we look at the messages that are sent, I mean, should check what is getting the complaint <laughs> in order to you get take turns. Everybody gets five minutes. You <laughs> <laughs> bubble it, and then, like, once you sign it, the signing and the submitting is in the past. So you submit here, and once the two thirds in our reference or whatever you implemented uh, is fulfilled, you propagate to the to this to commit in the in the parents SDA. And leaving a subnet is like the same. You send the subnet actor the same way that you join, and this triggers the release of the collateral with a caveat that is that if you release collateral below, so so if you're releasing collateral and the collateral goes below the threshold, you the subnet gets in a process state in which it cannot interact with the sub with the rest of the hierarchy until you recover the collateral in some way, either joining or or adding new collateral by the existing manager. And finally, the crossnet messages. So, as I said, like we have two main crossnet messages: the the top down, which is like from a parent or from the root to a child, and we have the bottom up, which is from a child or someone up uh, down the hierarchy to either the top, no, to the top. So the, the first ones are just uh, committed through syncing, and the other ones are propagated. Through the checkpoint, and then when you have a checkpoint committed to the parent, so you can like route it. And then we have the, what we call the parent transaction, which is just a combination of top down and bottom up, which means that if, for instance, you want to send from one channel to the other, you first do a bottom up, so you propagate the checkpoint up. The SCA here detects that it is not directed to this uh, subnet that it needs to be routed. It sees that it's the top down one that needs to be routed, so it will like prepare a top down message to send that. And yeah, the same cross messages are sent to the SCA. So if we had to send us a bottom up, it will go to the SCA in the subnet and we will uh, checkpoint in the top and then commit it. And then the top down is like the same way, the same cross from which, from the subnet from which you want to send the cross message. And the actual commitment is done. So we have two message pools now. We have the, the message pool for the subnet, which is its own message pool, and then what we call the cross message pool. That is responsible for uh, ident like listening to events, saying, "Hey, there's new cross messages that need to be applied to this subnet," and also resolving because some of like checkpoint and cross, cross messages are by the checkpoint you only see the CID. So this cross message pool is responsible for the resolution of that CID, so that you have the client messages and you can apply them locally in the processes. So for the top down messages, like you would have a bunch of messages that come from the parent or like the, the root or whatever. The you when these messages trigger the state change, and this is the event that I was mentioning, uh, the the cross message pool from the child will see that there are messages with new nonsense that haven't been applied. So it will propose them as a plain message in the blog. It goes through the consensus, the, the blog is committed, and then when you need to be executed, you have a way of identifying that it's a cross message. So you apply a message in the SCA before like executing the message and this triggers the state change in the in the 
first one is that. And for bottom up, it's kind of the same with the difference that you may be propagating not only cross messages, but also like cross messages that come from the child because that have been committed and you need to route them up. And all is included in this CID meta, which is like the CID of the list of things that need to be applied somewhere else. You propagate them up with a, a to and a from. So actually what we're building is, we call it the meta tree, which is a, a tree of the from to and the list of messages that need to be applied. So you do a package of these, you take the CID, you propagate it, and then this is uh, recursively resolved by the cross message pool when it receives one for, for itself. We will propagate the message with uh, the cross messages, the cross message pool, in this case from the parent, because it's a bottom up, it would see that there's a new checking that has been committed with cross message spending, with messages that haven't been applied. You only have the CID, which actually is not messages not applied, but CID meta that hasn't been applied. So you get the, it will go to the subnet, I mean, call the content resolution protocol and get the list of messages behind that CID. And the rest is the same. We include them, we propose them as a people's other message in a, a consensus, we commit it, and then we apply um, this, this CA applies it as if it was a, a proper, like any other message. And the cross message resolution protocol, it is um, so it's quite straightforward, but we have a push and a pull approach. So whenever we sign chain points, we also push early to the subnet where we're sending. Eventually, we'll get this information so that they can cache it locally if they want. If they don't like this, up to them. So we sign the checkpoint and we push that information to the corresponding subnets that will need it uh, so that they can cache locally if they want. This is probably what you're going to use for two points in. This is the protocol that I was suggesting you to use for V2 to access the storage. So do you guys get this part? Because you propagate to checkpoint, you propagate the hash of the information. Where is the information? It's in the original subnet. Now, there are two approaches. When the destination subnet gets from the parent now the information that something is going on, it can pull the information. Or you can push from the source information to the so, and we're doing both. Are we talking about payload of the transaction? Payload of the yes. transaction, exactly. So, there is basically get an information and it's addressed. So, from this subnet, yeah. you get as a destination from the parent something is going on that you should, and this is the hash of information that right. should be second. Where is the information? And this is what I want to speak to. So, we, we push it early. This is in, a, in the as a subnet level, which means that someone may choose not to even listen to that message and discard it. So it's it's scalable in that sense. We have even validation and so on to, to avoid flooding. And then what happens is that you know, at one point, like we need this this information because we have a cache, we are like seeking from scratch, whatever. We have a pool approach where we send a message and we say, hey, someone here, please send me this information. And we have a, a bunch of like flooding including filters and validator filters and so on to avoid spamming, to avoid like the only thing that probably is missing in this protocol is a one to one, like a future peer approach that we have been syncing right now in Falcon. Because if this fails, you don't have a way of reaching. So I mean if you cast yourself fails for some reason or others, we need a one to one. The problem is how you discover someone in the right subnet. That's why we're using that But like that would be the, the fallback missing or which one maybe. To see, but yeah. the, all what we build at this level is using gossip stability to be at this this network oh. stack. Yeah. You don't do your own networking stack for. Yeah. And everything is content addressed. We use IPLD for all of these checkpoints and all of these things. We could have the Merkle forest eventually. What would you resolve from other subnets? And And yeah, this is something that I think we have a session, so I'm not going to go so deeper. I would love to show you and have your input. And that's basically from here, like the things that I was thinking is first, what are next steps? I mean, with all this is implemented, except the admin execution, everything is implemented. And uh, it could be I mean, in the purple water, so it's worth. Now we need to think if we want to invest time on trying to integrate compute over data, trying to have extensive testing or integration of the experiments or start thinking about translating to LPM. So what we're going to show is the 
cross subnet transactions. You want to cross subnet transactions? Yeah. Cross subnet transactions of five point payments. Of five point payments. Yes. So these are pay, these are one way payments. I pay to you, but you pay in another subnet, and it yeah. goes upstairs, downstairs. Yeah. 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 So the latency would be, you know, the latency of a cross subnet transaction would depend on the checkpoint latency and, and the layering of the. But but it took twice. It should it should be okay. I mean, we never did, of course, uh, yet performance test. And for each layer, upwards, we wait for the next checkpoint to propagate. Yeah. Yes. 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 We should but 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 in principle, in principle, you could because of this cross subnet push. Yeah. If you're pushing messages on a, on another side, yeah, you could have a pending information that the payment is pending like really quickly, and then you're just not you know you get on your mobile app in the future you get aha somebody paid you but you know it's pending for one minute more yeah and then it's good. Which is also similar to the massive day, like your mm -hmm. transactions processing, spending, whatever, and then you wait and you can back up there. Mm -hmm. It takes days. Yeah, it takes time. Yeah, okay. Maybe mm -hmm. that's it. Going to have to. I can take their checkpoint period as it is. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 But it works. I mean, there's no reason it shouldn't work. Yeah. Yeah. Are you ready on this? I don't know. Maybe we can run on this. Oh, we can download the latest dependencies of these computers. So, okay. I need to so we're really talking engineering. Like a lot of engineering, not not like very high level distributed systems context. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
in the original state after all that happens and then just comes to that. Anyway, you you go up and you just put it on fully state one state. Anyway, you're not uh, changing the state of your command, so you can't just fire it. It's just used to facilitate the communication. Yes. It's not used to change. The cross chain transaction doesn't change the state of whatever it's executed. It's just there as a common law. And then yeah, but you're in one subject, I'm in a different subject. No, we have a common system. We have a common system. Yeah. And then we want to do uh, like a thousand of thousands of thousands of operations. And uh, there is why why one of the pretty each of us that or those and you come to some state party acquisition and I will have yeah. my state party acquisition then. And then we just need to tell the common ancestor, uh, please confirm that this is what we commit to. Mm -hmm. Which sets are there, but it's all important. We will have the, the common set of questions to each other. No, we check that there are values for each one. And only for yes, that case, we tell the answer, okay, that's fine. We actually optimistically? Yes. Yes. And then we just let you know. Yeah. Yes. It's like these uh, trusted third party in this multi party computation. Yeah, I, mean, I think my point of the implementation of Nash is just need to agree at least some of the rules. Yes. You can figure that you might. So that's actually, yeah, you're right. Yeah. That's what I like. Mm -hmm. Yes. The answer right. is the obvious thing because the past ones you could do by definition. Of because both of those lists are trusted. Yeah. 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 But yes, yes, true. You kind of trust what my net one takes. And then you can actually use it. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to show you about Here we have a MVP code, but who's uh, rootnet mining. And this is like what we call the delegated processors, which is just one minor mining problem, but it could be something else. What we're going to do is deploy a new subnet. Um, a new subnet with, I mean, we have human readable names because we should have even a discovery system or an EMF human readable names or FNS. So, some people are, are discussing. Uh, and we're saying that we want to do it from the parent and with the process of the catalog one, which is so we're going to have a subnet and then the subnet running to be for it. You see what will it say about it? Can you see? I So you see that the, we just deployed, at this point, we just deployed the subnet actor and with this ID. So it says that we could have an available uh, subnet in this address, but it's not registered yet. So if we do list subnet, you see that there's nothing because we want to register it mm -hmm. to the parent. Now we're going to join it, adding two fragments of collateral. So we just take the subnet ID and we add two of collateral. The minimum I think is two, so it will be registered right away. We don't have to. So now we should see once the message gets through, we should see that with the list of subnets, we have now the subnet that is active and with the state of two partners, but now we'll circulate to partners. We haven't taken it. What we're going to do now is mine, and we're going to see that. So keep. I used some other identity. So now we, we started mining in the subnet. And we see that if we, we're going to start here the main chain. This proof of work is it's like slower. But you see that we just mined uh, a block. We're mining blocks even without mining in the root network because it's an independent. So we have two independent chains, two independent processes. They don't depend one in the other. When you're, when you're, when you're saying mining, you're mining on a subnet because you're committed. Mining in a subnet. Yes. Yeah, so now we're mining in both. 
Yes. Yes. Exactly, but uh, you committed to the two fields. Uh, now you're uh, this the, the operation downstairs is happening on submit uh, on level. Yeah, yeah. So this is my my note exactly um, um, whatever submit. So here I'm sending the flag. The submit. I actually, we can do something. I mean, if we do wallet list here, it goes to the root. Now you see that I have 174. But if I use submit API, yes. Okay. Yeah. That, that okay. Yeah. You see that here I should have zero. Yes. You see that here? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have these two chains. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do a top down transaction. So here, what we're saying is that we want to inject from the root. See that I'm not using the submit API thing to. So from the root, I want to inject in T0100 to part. Oh yeah, I did work, sorry. So it says like Christmas needs to be validated for shortly in the subnet because this is a top down, so it's committed on top. And once it's committed on top, this is super fast because like it's just one one message. So we should see here if this is the wallet list for the subnet. You see that I have a two part yes, here on the on the subnet here in the in this subnet. And if we see the circulating supply, so if you list the checkpoint of the subnet, you see that the circulating supply now is two part because we can. We can also release. So the release, these are uh, instead of sending a complex term, this is fun that release is just one way up. So up and down. And now we're gonna do a, a proper one that is flow through several subnets. How do you maintain the supply or recomputing the, all the time the latest state? Do you have it fresh or it's fresh? You can see it's like the moment you apply so in order to apply a cross message, the application is done through the SCA. I mean, this implicit message that we mentioned, which is not done everywhere, it's just done locally. So in this implicit message, it checks if there's some some fonts moving and it updates like the yeah, state of the S SC, SC. SC, yes. SC. So that's why we apply messages. And, and if it detects that fonts that are over the circulating suppliers are trying to leave the subnet, it kills the message. So it, it doesn't have a message to be closed. So this is our primary term. And, and we can show that. So that works. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna release some funds. It's super by the way, so that we see it now. They are This is a bit slower in the sense that it has to be propagated through checkpoints. So if we list here the checkpoints. You see that in the next checkpoint, we should have cross message equals true, meaning that there is a cross message here. It's true or So, like, I have 10 echoes between checking the word. I don't know. It's something. And you see that cross message is true, which means that it has cross messages. It is committed up, and now it's going to be applied in the top. So, we should see now that the circulating supply of the subnet is. What's the message? What did you change? You release some funds. No. Yeah, yeah. So now that you're to place your I recover the messages. I'm going to add really quickly a new subnet so that we can see how they route from one subnet instead of just up and down, mm -hmm. one, from one channel to the other, so that we see the full route. Mm -hmm. John. So then we should have two subnets. Both have proof of work. You see that here it's equated to supply zero. What we're gonna do is send we're gonna this, this this list subnet is on the main the root chain. Yes, yes, yes. yes. It cannot be uh, no, actually the list subnet only lists because we don't have a discovery yeah. mechanism now, it only lists your channels. So yeah. if I go to yeah. list okay. subnet in the in the yes. parent, uh, sorry, in the ones below it will show up. So the discovery wouldn't work currently, but you would, as a detecting tables, you would expect me to give you it would the work. address that is basically encompassing routing. Yes, it. yes, but, but but actually we could have a really simple command because you can traverse the current. It's just 
look into the state and say, hey, who's your child? Who's your child? Who's your child? So we could even graph the hierarchy. Anyone could like graph the hierarchy by asking. So I mean, this is that's why it's not implemented. If someone wants it, we can have it. I didn't think it would be useful at this point. Someone will want it. That's also a lot of messages. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> because you're just as what you say. Somewhere in class, they did you have to send the no, because like I could have like I, so I can see the state directly mm -hmm. instead of syncing. I say let state, it's one of them, and it's a protocol. Like it doesn't go through the there's no state changes, and no need for a message. No, no, we get an answer by you. Like, so I'm just like, but, yeah. Yeah. I'm honest, and that's a good point. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm assuming honest. <laughs> 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 But come on, we can have yeah, yeah. that's big ways. Just put it on the cloud as a good AWS. Yeah, just have to be cloud. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like address. So, what's the format of checkpoints currently? Does it assume something specific to Filecoin or? I mean, yeah, we, we're putting the tip set, but we're putting the Marshall tip set, so it's just a, a blob of bytes. We could put any tip set. So, to do this on Bitcoin, what do you need to check? What do you mean? Because you could do that, you could do this form of summit that is very collateral that means that you transfer on specific address. Yes, but like we need to, yeah, yeah, I mean, that it could be done, and in many blockchain, but we need the way of, of doing this. Uh, so we don't have the yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sure, that's it. Yeah. That's that. In yeah. theory, it would be straightforward, but yes. like in Bitcoin, we have the same problem that Sarah has. It's how do we do the, the complex logic? So yes, you can do it on the sign of the Bitcoin attack, but who carries the key of the address that holds the collateral? How is this balanced so to share the other? Was that anything else? Could that be a mystery? Yeah, yeah, I don't want to say the most. Yeah, but you need to put the first place in practice, and you need to forget about the, yeah, you need to do it in a specific way. We would need the DKG or something to get the scale. Well, I mean, if there's no success, it could be done like. Right away, because there's not that much move between 100 addresses. Especially for like that much. But yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna send the 0 0.2. So we should see. Sorry, the stupid question. Is the, the tick set is like some the last message of the checkpoint or what is it? It's the okay. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we don't have blood, we have several heads uh -huh. so in the chain. So it's yeah. all of the current heads. Right. Yeah, so we follow the message. So we yes, and then the, the, the set of the tips equals heads. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought I remembered. <laughs> and then you figure state changes in that code. <laughs> and then, then you somehow will be deterministically ordered than when you. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, this, this message that I showed you, it should have like, it means the checkpoints. We see that uh, this one included true, uh, like the checkpoint up, and then if this worked, if we in the subnet in the subnet one, we should see zero point two. But we don't see zero point two. Something happened. Yes, any message for you? I did it the other way around. <laughs> it failed because I was sending from the subject that I don't know. Wait, yes, I did that. So we should see a true over here. Yeah, the last one. No, no, not this one. It's not the previous one. We should see a true. Yeah. Now we should see the scintillator supply. 
Yes, uh, actually it works. And now we can kill one of the. I guess another one. I didn't see you. Sorry. See another. Let's set some zero point two. So you see that here in the list of that we have zero point four. We should have zero point six yeah. in like shortly once the checkpoint is on up and down. So we should sit here. I mean, I should have chosen something that is not the work it's so. <laughs> but hopefully after 10 o'clock, so yeah, we have the truth here. And then we should see shortly that in this subnet, we have 2.6. You don't seem confused. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and now we're going to kill one of the subnets. And you'll see that actually, let's do something like we are watching here. So, here and we are seeing the subnet in the right, like sorry, the checkpoint. You'll see that once I kill it, there won't be checkpoint because I will kill the. So, in practice, what, what happens under the hood here? It's mostly push of transactions. So, this is how they come, or there is you think there is a this is push of transactions. I mean, it's working with push because, like, well. Everyone is listening, but I could, if you want, I can start a new subnet and it will be able to sync from scratch because it will be pulling from the right subnet. Mm -hmm. So we can, I, I can show you. Mm -hmm. That's fine. So we have, I mean, the two approaches work. But right now it's, uh, we are pushing, we are just getting it. Okay, that's it. Um, so, yeah. so why don't you solve data availability in some sense? No, because like, if no one sends the message back, so I'm moving on. Yeah, I didn't send the message, so so no one technically is. So is every sum of his own message that has to push it to your Yes. If not, we did. So now I'm going to leave the collateral use. You, you'll see that the subnet should be frozen and the checkpoint should disappear because, yes, no one, I'm not listening to the subnet anymore from the node. And if I use the subnet, this is active because I released all of my state. It just has one minor just one state. And the problem is that, that this is where we need the state because there's still circulating supply that can't go out because there's no miners. But the subject is still alive. Mm -hmm. This is what we mentioned the other day. Because, which it would be good to have a, a because we have a checkpoint. We know what happened. We can't, but we don't have access to the state if it's minor yeah. So right now it would be locked. It would be locked. It would be locked. Yes. But like, I mean, we can enforce that you can't leave like in yeah, yeah, yeah. the until the all the there are lots of solutions we haven't agreed upon. Yeah. Okay. The problem is that checkpoint is not actually anywhere. It is just a pass. So you can't just say, yeah. I might go to one and it's a map. Yes. I mean, you can have the checkpoint committed in the parent. So if you have, you don't have the thing, but you don't have a state. Yeah. Yeah. You have a checkpoint. Yeah. So it you have a checkpoint. Yeah. Yeah. Check yeah. yeah. like, it's in that case, or nothing that's not that. No. Yeah. So mm -hmm. just keep going on. So you don't have the thing. And uh, what else? Yeah, and, and we can do what Marco suggested. Like, let's let's sync from scratch so that we pull all of the data from another subnet. Uh, I'm in the right uh, way. I'm going to export. And we're just going to sync. So you can sync with any subnet. We're going to sync with this. No, actually, let's sync with the parent so that we need to pick all the checkpoints from the chart. So now, when I connect the two nodes, we should see how it. So in the top right, you'll see how it starts syncing with everything, mm -hmm. like all the checkpoints. It will be picking up all the information. Here. It's syncing with the checkpoint with the root chain, and then I can sync with any of the channels, and it will be able to fetch the. It is actually, it does not matter what you mentioned. I tried to pull, but I can't. 
find the information because I just killed the <laughs> I killed the sound so we can sync because it could this is something that we should fix because I tried to sync with something that now I don't have access to sync with it because there are no minors So if you save it something yeah I, I could pick it up with the content resolution but it just happened with two events it's like I killed the subnet there are messages that were directed to the top but I don't have a way of getting the checkpoint so that's why it fails. Actually if I join again that should work. Where is the state? Where do you think of the reserved? So you just cannot access. Sir? Is the is the state preserved? Because you said if I join again, I can see it. Yeah, because I, I haven't really it's closed the case. It's my peer, so <laughs> I haven't quite <laughs> cheated. Yeah. I'm cheating. It's the cloud. Yeah. It's under the cloud. Yeah. yeah. But like, no, no, actually, yeah, no. If someone added me, like, if it wasn't me and someone else had a clash on had the change sync, we could do it. But the thing is that I was the only known and I disappeared, so there's no point. And now let's so but, but this save button is interesting because we have where to save we should try we should have that functionality right mm -hmm. uh, information so from a VM we can have an actor that's stored the index yes which is what we so once the VM comes I'm Taking this for granted, even we cannot retrieve it yet. But at least, <laughs> but it's there. It's there. <laughs> That's what how many is best. The guarantee is that it's there. <laughs> it's there. You can find it. 